fairly controversial stuff in that bottle right there. Hello and welcome to Logan Rando Aquascaping. My name is Logan and today we are gonna talk about well, you probably already guessed it, Seachem Flourish Excel. So this is an extremely popular product in the aquascaping hobby. A lot of folks use it as a carbon supplement when they don't want to inject CO2 into their tank. And a lot of folks will also use it if they have bad algae because they report that it helps reduce the algae. So today I wanna to do a sort of a deep dive into Flourish Excel and see what I can dig up regarding how this stuff actually works chemically and see if we can get a little bit scientific with it. So first, let's head on over to Seachem's website and see what they have to say about those claims I mentioned. All right, so here we are at my computer and I'm right on Seachem's website and they have a whole page addressing some of these claims that I mentioned earlier on the couch. So let's go through a few of these right now, one by one, because some of these right away will provide some insight and help us dispel some of the myths. So claim number two on their website, Flourish Excel is not actually liquid CO2 or liquid carbon. Liquid carbon or liquid CO2 are misnomers that have been applied to Flourish Excel and similar products by our competitors and the general public to quickly summarize the purpose of this product. They go on to say, we don't use those terms in our packaging or marketing because they are inaccurate. Flourish Excel, which is the product's name, is an organic carbon source that yes, is in a liquid form. Right out of the gate, Seachem says, no, this is not liquid carbon. They dispel that pretty hard. So I think that takes care of a pretty big myth. Uh, Seachem does not wanna call this liquid carbon. They're not claiming it is any sort of a replacement for pressurized CO2. Um, they even equate it where if a pressurized CO2 system with a pH controller timer is a 10, then just dosing with Flourish Excel is a seven. I think that might be a little bit generous, but hey, we'll give it to them. Claim number three, Flourish Excel is actually glutaraldehyde. It is a dangerous carcinogen that is harmful to fish, plants, and humans. The claim that Flourish Excel is glutaraldehyde is a common one that is simply not true. I cannot speak for any other companies that may or may not use glutaraldehyde. I can only speak for our company and our product. While structurally similar, Flourish Excel is not a glutaraldehyde product. Flourish Excel contains a molecule, 2% polycycloglutaracetyl, which contains a five carbon chain backbone. This molecule simulates the way a carbon would function in photosynthesis and helps to fill the gap in a plant's metabolic chain when there is not enough carbon present in the system. So regarding the glutaraldehyde part, I did a really long deep dive on that. And my conclusion, and feel free to back me up if you're a, a chemist or a biochemist, it is glutaraldehyde. It's something called polycyclo glutaracetyl, which Seachem actually invented that name. They trademarked it. It's not any sort of like widely established scientific term. Um, and most folks that know a little bit about chemistry seem to think that it's basically glutaraldehyde and some undisclosed organic compounds and proteins that prevent it from being so reactive. And by introducing these other compounds that Seachem won't disclose because it's proprietary information, it allows it to be more stable. So for all intents and purpose, it is definitely glutaraldehyde. And claim number four, Flourish Excel is actually just an algicide and does not actually help the plants grow. Flourish Excel is not an algicide. We do not recommend it as an algicide and make no claim for it being an algicide because it's not. Okay, so they're very adamant. It's not an algicide, guys. Stop. <laughs> And they say that it's definitely not an algicide. They're extremely adamant about that. And I think that has something to do with the legality of it. If they were selling us an official algicide, uh, they would be subject to additional regulation, uh, at least in the States. I'm sure it varies per country. It's probably even more strict in Europe and Asia. Um, but because it's not technically an algicide, they can probably bypass a lot of that regulation. And then Seachem gives us a little bit of insight into how the active ingredient in the bottle works. So once again, that active ingredient is polycycloglutaracetyl. Here's what Seachem has to say about that. The reason plants need CO2 is to produce longer chain carbon compounds, also known as photosynthetic intermediates. Photosynthetic intermediates include compounds such as blah, 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 long chemical names. Although the names are complicated, 
Yes, they are. These structures are quite simple. They're five carbon chains. Flourish Excel does not contain these specific compounds per se, but one that is quite similar. By dosing with Flourish Excel, you bypass the involvement of CO2 and introduce the already finished structurally similar compounds. It is in its structural similarity that Flourish Excel is able to be utilized in the carbon chain building process of photosynthesis. Simple chemical or enzymatic steps can easily convert it to any one of the above named compounds or variety of others. Okay, so let's use a little bit of an analogy to help us further understand how this active ingredient can work as a carbon intermediate. So let's say you have the task of building an entire village out of Legos, okay? And you have like a hundred different Legos. So the Legos are your CO2, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take those Legos, you know, you're gonna pull pieces apart, put different ones together, and you're gonna build the walls, you're gonna build the door, you're gonna build the roof, the bases, and sooner later you'll have individual houses out of that. So you have to build each and every one of those houses for your village individually. What Seachem is saying is, hey, it's totally cool to build villages out of individual pieces of Legos, but we want to give you walls that are pre-built already. Then you just have to assemble them to the floor, but eventually you'll get to the village as well. So that's basically how this polycycloglutaracetyl works according to Seachem. It's not the exact carbon intermediate that a plant would normally create via photosynthesis from carbon, but they're saying it's similar enough where through some metabolic processes, the plants can transform it to help create those villages like you did with the Legos. All right, so here we are back at the couch and it's time to make sense of all this information. So when you deep dive into something chemically complicated and a little bit mysterious like Seachem Flourish Excel, you can come out a little bit more confused than when you started. And I might be in that situation today, but I think there are some conclusions we can draw. And the first one relates to the hundreds, if not thousands of anecdotal reports we've gotten from hobbyists who use this product. So a lot of these folks are hobbyists who weren't injecting pressurized CO2 into their tank. And then they introduced Excel and they saw positive results. So we can't ignore that. There's something to using this that improves plant growth and helps reduce algae. However, I find that that's usually with hobbyists who aren't already injecting CO2 into their tanks. And in fact, Seachem says that multiple times. They describe a full high-tech setup as a 10, and they describe Seachem Flourish as a seven. So they acknowledge that doing it properly with the injected CO2 is the way to go. However, I think this is a healthy alternative if you don't wanna go that route or you don't have the budget or you're not yet comfortable. So there's something to be said about that. Here's the other thing. Seachem multiple times on their website claims that this is not glutaraldehyde and that's just simply not true. Everything I've researched states that this is a isomer of glutaraldehyde, it's just a different formation and that's a proprietary name they've given it. So for all intents and purposes, this certainly is glutaraldehyde. However, it's completely diluted and as long as you use it at their recommended dose, you really have nothing to worry about at all. So I don't anticipate this being any sort of a danger for your tank as long as you follow directions, but that really goes for any sort of chemicals. So if there's something additional you'd like to see me do a deep dive on, let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and I will see you in the next one.